bite the bullet means to do something unpleasant or painful because it's necessary, even though you'd like to avoid it. Well, if I didn't want to miss an entire archery season, I'd have to learn to literally bite the arrow. I started to notice something was a little off when I was on a sheep hunt in BC. Uh, I went to a doctor and they did an x-ray and he came back and was like, man, this is really bad. Your tendons are torn and the wrist is dislocated. How'd you do it? I, I kind of like was racking my brain. And, and I remembered earlier in the year I was duck hunting. And these two mallards are flying at us. And so I shot, dropped the bird and it comes sailing down toward me. And I reached up to catch the duck as it was falling. Bad idea. It hit my two middle fingers. And I remember being like, oh man, that hurt. And I didn't catch the duck. That's the worst part, I didn't even catch the duck. Well, I'm at the surgery center. I've had a jacked up wrist for most of the year. It was uh, in many ways an extensive surgery with a six month recovery. They're gonna go in, they're gonna reset the bones, redo, they're gonna take some ligaments, harvest some and rebuild the thing. And I'll be back in action soon enough. It was a two hour surgery and I woke up, I think five and a half hours later. Unfortunately, I had a lot of scar tissue. I had no feeling in my hand after the surgery. <laughs> the easiest way to say it, the surgery went horrible. It didn't go right. I had a hunt planned in Argentina. Just got my cast cut off. I can start to move my fingers, so I gotta be wearing a pretty protective brace, trying to stretch it out. Watch, watch this is a good progress. See that? <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, and I actually got my cast cut off the week before we left. I was just getting a little bit of finger movement back, but still didn't have a lot of feeling. I could move my trigger finger, that's all I was worried about. And then had to kind of operate the gun left-handed. It was a little awkward, but I made it happen. So I got back from Argentina and everything was good. You know, I was just going through the healing process, doing my PT, uh, planning on this thing being over in a couple months. You're averaging 53. Yeah, which makes sense because he's usually pulled a couple pounds heavy. But I just thought in the back of my mind, just in case something doesn't go right, I don't want to sit an archery season out. So I have a friend by the name of Nolan Young who was born with cerebral palsy. And I've shot with him many times and he shoots a mouth tab and he's extremely accurate with it. He's a great hunter. And I thought, I think that might be the option for me. Jeez. <laughs> so you just keep pushing through the feeling that feels like all the teeth are gonna rip out of your mouth. Yeah, I just get like a pretty good firm bite. <laughs> through that week, I just started shooting in my backyard, really building the confidence. Oh yeah. I, I did have one unfortunate incident where I was drawing back and the middle grommet sliced my D-loop and like peak draw weight, that thing just went off. I never actually had the intention of hunting with it per se because I thought that I would be recovered by the time I had any hunts coming up. So it was now made and New Zealand announced that they're opening their borders. At this point, it's kind of a last minute trip and I knew that I wasn't ready to draw a bow back with my hand. So I thought this is actually a really good opportunity to take this mouth tab out and see if I can be successful. It was gonna be my first mouth tab hunt and I just had this idea, I was like, well, I might as well self film it too. So it was like a one-handed film and a one-handed hunt. I don't know, I get some kind of sick satisfaction out of doing something that seems almost impossible. So at least it wasn't a giant buck that I will find another doe. At least it was a clean miss. <laughs> nice buck bedded down in the bottom here. He's pretty good looking. The sun's just starting to hit him though, so I'm assuming he's gonna get up and rebed in a minute. This deer is an absolute giant, but to get close enough with the mouth tab, it could be tough. There's just a lot of does around. I can make an approach, but I'm gonna spook a lot of deer. But the other thing is that's not probably my only option. I quickly made a move, got down there, dropped my shoes, uh, set up the camera, set everything up, stalked in and got a shot.
I thought, no way, not only did I get a good buck, but I got it self-filmed, spot and stock with the mouth tab. But I also just kind of had this feeling something wasn't right with my wrist. Like it just wasn't healing right. Things weren't progressing right. Everything they told me pre-surgery was non-existent. So I go back in for another checkup and I get bad news. The surgery had failed and the anchor no longer was attached. Honestly, that really, really sucked. I knew that I would not only have to go through that same surgery again, which was a fairly painful process and a long recovery. All right, round two, done and dusted. But I was also afraid of what that coming hunting season would look like. And right in that moment, I felt like the idea of a full archery season just looked pretty bleak. It was gonna be happening in the one time that I didn't want it to happen, right when the season was about to start. Okay. I'm getting lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> But the one saving grace, and I think the thing that I really focused on, was in the back of my mind, I knew that I had already found success with the mouth tab. But I also knew that I'd really need to commit to it and be even more proficient. I was not going to let this setback ruin my bow season. Oh my gosh. Dude, I knew... Like that hit perfect. Ram down. Look at this guy. Once that happened, that really started to build my confidence thinking, okay, if this is gonna be a, re a reality for the season, uh, I think that I can pull this off. So I upped the poundage to 65 pounds and now it was meal deer season. My favorite hunt of the year and I was gonna do it in a way that I'd never done it before. think that going into this mule deer hunt it'd be like maybe a little less pressure just saying like hey it, you're going with a mouth tab whatever happens happens but there's still always this pressure for me personally of just saying like you gotta hunt your hardest you gotta hunt your best and so I've kind of got like this never quit mentality of if I've got a tag in my pocket like I want to hunt it and I want to hunt it as hard as possible and I just picked a spot where I can look over a lot of country from here I can just see for miles so I'm gonna just slowly start picking it apart and try to figure out where the deer are at it's more of a thing that there's a lot of country without deer you just kind of got to find that one spot where they tend to be or they're gonna like I'm going on this hunt and I'm hunting with the mouth tab, so it's the same as if I were going on this hunt and hunting with uh, a recurve or a longbow. It's like the same mentality. You've got to get close. The plan is get in tight, sit there, and wait. He bedded in the right spot. I stalked in. It was classic spot and stalk, everything that you'd want. up making a perfect shot and taking a great Nevada view. I, I had found success mule deer hunting in Nevada. I had found success self-filming a hunt and now it was kind of time to think about this Greenland trip. Just need one hand. I kind of told myself before the trip, I'm gonna be in situations with other people, and I really just had to stick to the shots that I felt comfortable with. There's a nice bull feeding up here with another smaller bull. They're feeding intensely enough that as soon as they pop over, I think I can make a move. It was like a gimme with any other bow. 55. But 
For me, it just didn't feel right, and I wanted to wait. And so I decided to wait for a better opportunity. That bull got away, but I ended up getting back on and getting the perfect opportunity and making a great shot. I went into the hunting season feeling like this mouth tab was really going to limit me. And by the time I got back from Greenland, I just started thinking, it hasn't limited me in any way. And I maybe was like <laughs> overconfident. And I had an over-the-counter elk tag. And I only had like a long weekend to hunt it. I said to myself, I was like, I think I can be successful on this hunt. And that's like a crazy thing to say. I didn't hear any bugles this morning, but I'm glassing in this far basin. There's a bunch of elk working out there. So I started making my way over there, see if I can get a bull to start bugling. I was just feeling it, I guess. There's a middle of the day lull, and I got a bull to fire up in the middle of the day. When that happens, I think to myself, this might actually work out. I just gotta beat the fading light. I've got an hour before dark, and with the limited amount of time, I decided the only option now is to sneak in. So I got below where the bull was, crept in, and bumped him. We came in, and he was bedded right here. What was that? How far was he? Stepped in the wrong spot. I don't know, like, I, I came in a little too tight and the bull blew out. The second he blew out, I bugled. When I bugled, it had stopped him. So as I creeped up to the rise, I saw his antler tips. He's here, and I could tell that he was standing broadside. I tried to range him, but I just couldn't get a good range. And I knew I didn't want to pop up and be the way that the ridge was. I was gonna be skylined. So the one time that I popped up, I wanted to be at full draw. The bull was standing there broadside. I guessed him at 45 yards. Let the arrow fly. And I heard that. It sounded like a pumpkin thump. Everything's going through your head. Like, was it a good hit? Did I make a good shot? Walked up and saw that arrow with good blood on it. That arrow blew through. I think there's no doubt in my mind based on this that he's down right here somewhere. that point, it really shook me of thinking, I'm having one of the best seasons of my life. And it would have been so easy to sit it out. So pumped. I've got a wrist injury, I had a surgery. Feels like a car's parked on my wrist right now. Both seasons done for me. Number two, down. <laughs> So you just keep pushing through the feeling that feels like all the teeth are going to rip out of your mouth. All right. Got the mouth tab going. Oh, yeah. The mouth tab experience kind of taught me, like, to go through the process of, of setting everything right, to really pay attention to the little details, the little nuances. This deer is an absolute giant, but to get close enough with the mouth tab, it can be tough. And then just having that mindset of, like, not letting it impede the hunt. It's definitely worth a try though. <laughs> Enjoying bow hunting. I'm bow hunting different. I'm using a mouth tab, but it's still bow hunting and I was loving every minute of it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it.